Hello everyone, Melody here, mom of four in our blended family of six. If you're new to our channel, please take a second to like and subscribe so that you can follow along with us while we look through curriculums, talk about homeschooling and blended family life, motherhood, all that fun stuff. Today's video is going to be about the story of science, Aristotle leads the way. that the reason why I found that was because I was using A History of Us, which is also by Joy Hakim, and I really liked this program. It's an 11-book series. I have a review on it. If you're interested, check it out. This history program has been a great resource for my kids. Well, later I discovered, fancy that, she has a science series as well, which instead of 11-book series, it's actually three books. So I've got the story of science, Aristotle leads the way. I've got the story of science, Einstein adds a new dimension. And last but not least, this nice big old book, the story of science, Newton at the center. I ordered these three books and I had intended to use them as an additional resource to whatever we chose to use for science. But then I was looking at it and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna use it by themselves and get some metal science kits or something going there. But then when I mentioned it on one of my videos, a very helpful viewer mentioned to me that they actually have student guide or student workbooks that go along with the story of science books. Of course, I got on there, I did a little research, and I discovered the student guide to Aristotle Leads the Way. And then I discovered the teacher guide to Aristotle Leads the Way. And I finally decided that these three books, all pieces of the Aristotle Leads the Way portion, will work perfectly for our science curriculum for next year. And so I just received the student guide and the teacher guide in the mail the other day. I spent yesterday breezing through them, checking them out, and I'm super, super, super excited. So I wanted to share a preview of them with you guys before I get started. Now this is a preview, not um, a complete review because I haven't used them yet. And as we all know, sometimes you get a curriculum, you're really excited about it and it doesn't work in practice like you want it to, but I'm really hopeful for this one. And I wanted you guys to get a sneak peek before I actually started using them. So let's get into these books and see what's on the inside. The first book we're going to look at is The Story of Science, Aristotle Leads the Way, and this is the main textbook, if you will. The second book we are going to look at is The Student Quest Guide, and the third book will be The Teacher Quest Guide. Okay, here we have The Story of Science, Aristotle Leads the Way by Joy Hakim. This is the main uh, textbook, if you will. I don't know that it's necessarily called a textbook, but as you can see, it's fairly thick. It's a hardcover book. It appears to be pretty well bound. Of course, I just got it. So this is a preview, not a review. I haven't used this material yet. I have used Joy Hakim's a History of Us, which is what inspired me to look up this material, but I have not used the story of science yet. If we open the book up, first we'll see a writer's reason, and then some acknowledgments of the people that helped make this possible. And then of course we jump to the table of contents. As you can see, there's a key down here. If you have a blue symbol next to a chapter or a topic, it correlates with a different feature. So we've got science, math, language arts, technology and engineering, geography and philosophy. I was really excited when I discovered that this book was so all inclusive. I can get so much out of this beyond just science. There are 30 chapters in the book. Chapter one, birthing a universe. 
The first thing you might notice, aside from the beautiful photography that you'll find throughout the book, is that the very first quote is a quote from Genesis and the Christian Old Testament. This is not a religious resource. This is a secular resource. But religion has played a huge role in our history and I think if we ignore these things, then we're doing our children a disservice. So it's important to address it. One of the first topics it covers is BC or BCE. The dates in here will be covered as BCE, meaning before the common era, or CE, meaning common era, as opposed to BC, meaning before Christ, or AD, meaning Anno Domini, in the year of the Lord. We have some other great photography pieces here. Maps, we've got a timeline that goes all the way through. And she's really zooming in and showing us what area is being talked about in any given chapter. I'm just going to go through chapter one real quick so you can see how it's set up with the story, some side notes, other um, fun little tidbits for the year kids to listen to. And that's chapter one. So if you go through it, it pretty much follows that same format. I'm going to flip here to the end of the book, the very last chapter, chapter 30. Finally, how science works. Same thing. We've got some quotes in the beginning, the story itself, some pictures. I always really enjoy the pictures personally. And then some suggested reading that you might want to tackle if you want more information. Books for kids. Stretch a little further. Construct a catapult. Echoes of the ancient skies, lost discoveries. There's some great extension activities in here. Picture credits, uh, permissions, and then of course the index. So I'm not going to go through this in great detail because I haven't had a chance myself to look through it and see what it has to offer, but I hope that gives you an idea of what's in the book and how it's structured. Next, we're going to look at the student quest guide that goes along with Aristotle Leads the Way. This was developed by the John, Johns Hopkins University, and it's really, it's paperback. It's a really thin little book. There's not a lot to it. We've got the information on the back, smithsonianbooks.com. I got this on Amazon, but I'm guessing you can find it at smithsonianbooks.com. The table of contents. It's broken down into one, two, three, let's see, four, five units, and then different lessons for each unit. Uh, unit one, lesson one, it's a preview, but that's it. That's unit one, lesson one. I know it doesn't look like a lot right there. You're like, what am I gonna do with that? I'll pull out the teacher manual and I'll show you how they connect in just a moment. We can skip to unit one, lesson two, which is reading chapters one and two. It gives you your vocabulary. It gives you some geography and then a little task for your children to fill that out. Um, I know it's really just blue and white, but I like the color pop personally. I'm looking forward to using this with my students. Unit five, lesson two. So that should give you an idea of what the student guide looks like. The last section of today's video is about the teacher quest guide that goes along with the student guide. You can see this is spiral bound. It's significantly thicker than the student guide. I'd say it's almost as thick, if not thicker than the text itself, but there is a lot of material in here. So I put some tabs on here for myself. Ah. Sorry guys, like I said, I'm just looking at this, so I'm not super familiar with it either. Here we have the table of contents. As you can see, it's split into those five units, just like the student guide is, so they correlate. It gives you the teacher quest guide, it talks about the lesson formats, how to use this guide, classroom materials. A lot of this is talking about if you're using it in a classroom, 
we as homeschoolers would probably do things a little bit differently. And there is a note to homeschool parents specifically about that. All right, let's look at the using teacher quest guide. The very first thing to note, this is intended for grades six through eight. I will be using it next year for my fifth and seventh grader. They meet the national science education standards for grades five through eight. And it says sessions contain more activities than a class can accomplish during a typical class period. I did notice that there's a lot of materials in here. It even says in here, these materials are not intended to be used cover to cover. They're providing you a lot of different options so that you can pick the activities that work best for your child that you think will help them retain the information the best and leave the rest. The curriculum is 45 sessions long. So just this one book will get you through the whole school year and then some, depending on how you have your school year structured. If we go back to the introduction of unit one, it has materials lists. You can see all the materials needed throughout unit one. It gives you a little background and interesting read. I didn't see any part where it said this was for the students, but I read it and I thought I'll probably read it out loud to my kids too. Then it tells you what standards are meant. So if you're worried about meeting Common Core standards or any other types of standards, or if you're using this material and trying to get like a high school credit for it, this information will really help you put those credits together for your child. All right, unit one, lesson one. It's really spelled out. We've got our theme, our goal, our vocab. It's talking about the BCE versus CE like I talked about earlier and what you're going to be doing with your kids. One of the things I'm really excited about in this is a timeline. So we've got lesson two, birthing a universe and telling it like they thought it was, myths of creation. I really like how it goes through different creation myths from around the world. And you can see how the teacher guide is structured. Again, it's really spelled out for you. If we go to the back of the book, we can hit the appendix, and the appendix has all kinds of useful materials in it. It says it includes transparencies. I don't know about any of you, but that's not something I use in my home. But that doesn't mean I can't either make copies of these or just pull this book out and open it to this page. I have no idea. This was supposed to be brand new. It was in the plastic when I got it, and I do not know what all this red marker is. But, please excuse it, nobody bled to death in my house, I promise. It looks kind of crazy. But anyway, we've got the transparencies here that correlate with the different chapters. Let's see what else we've got. Transparency Master. Aha, appendix. There are assessments throughout that you can use or not use, depending on what you want to do but it already has the units broken down. So you can quiz your kids if that's something you like to do and see what information they're retaining or what information they might just see more of. We have some maps, all kinds of stuff. I really like that the scientist or professor here is a woman. I don't know that that really matters, but I like it just the same. There's another assessment. Heroes in Science. All right, so that about sums it up. We have our teacher guide, we have our student guide, and we have the text that it is all built off. I hope that it answered some of your questions. Please check out joyhakim.com so that you can get more information and there are more resources on there that go along with all of her book series. I personally am a huge fan and I hope that this will lead you down a path to discover some new things that you might be able to use in your homeschool. Or maybe it looked like something that you wouldn't be interested in at all. Either way, hopefully it was useful. Please remember, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, follow along when we talk all things curriculum, homeschool, blended family life, and motherhood. And until next time, have a good day, everyone.